Hello everyone. After some thought, I've decided to call this TCP Tricks. We're starting here in the main section of Affinity Photo. You can see I've cleared out all my projects. Now we're in the new document um, menu. There's all kinds of stuff here. There's focus, selecting, and HDR, which is what I'm going to be talking about today. This interface is actually very easy to use. You can just tap the Add Photos button on the side, or you can pull up your Photos app into slide over mode and select the photos you want and just drag them over. Then they appear right in the menu. I adjusted the amount on the HDR slider. I'm still not entirely sure what what it does, but I wanted to get a little bit more visual on the sunset because this was a uh, sunset photo. And then I sped some of this stuff up so that you guys didn't have to wait as long and they keep things at a steady pace. We're in. Now, HDR photos actually have their own set of tools and set of menus that you can use. The first one, you have some of the stuff like exposure, like you see when you're doing develop mode or contrast and stuff like that. But you also have two sliders at the top that are specific to high dynamic range. One of them increases the brightness of the HDR, or rather decreases it, it starts at maximum. And the other one increases the effect. It's almost as if it's increasing the HDR effect, yeah. Just going through the other menus here, you can also pick from different styles if you just want to do something quick and then be done. This program really is amazing. Affinity Photo on iPad is so easy to use. I use it for absolutely all of my photo editing, even when it comes to making the slides for some of these videos. And now it's processing and we're into the regular edit mode. Although you have an extra slider here. You can still, even after that, just adjust the exposure and the, and the gamma. But I didn't mess around too much with that. I mess around with it a little bit later. But the first thing I did is I don't like or the first thing I did is I cropped out part of the picture because you can see that the horizon line isn't quite straight. There we go. Zoom out so that I can This program has this really neat feature where you just draw across a line that's supposed to be horizontal and it'll fix it for you. And I didn't want to lose too much info in this image, so I really just adjusted it so there were no transparent areas around the image. When you do this, make sure you check your corners because I've had it multiple times where I've cropped like this and found a little sliver of the canvas still in the back corner or in the top right or top left can be a real pain in the rear end sometimes. <laughs> All right. Now I don't like the houses along the horizon line, so I tried to use the darken brush to kind of make them kind of in line more with the environment, but that didn't work too well.
There are quite a lot of options that you can choose from just within that small tool menu. It, this program really is incredible. I promise I'm not advertising for Affinity Photo. <laughs> I decided to change my strategy since the darkening method wasn't working too well. I switched to the inpainting brush. The inpainting brush is pretty neat. It uses pixels in the surrounding area to paint in what the object that you don't want to, to be there. When you do this, do what I say, not what I do, including when it comes to using the darkening brush. Make a pixel layer and name it. Name it whatever you want. I named it mine overlay. Do what I say, not as I do. <laughs> you can see I'm just going over here. And this doesn't always work. Some large pictures don't always... Um, or sorry, large objects don't always mesh well. You can try multiple times, but it tends to degrade the image. So I left that big building on the right side there. Uh, there. <laughs> Next thing I did is I was a little bit concerned because as I was zoomed in, I thought I saw a little bit of noise on the horizon line. So I activated the really useful noise um, reduction filter. I used a, a live filter so that I could edit or delete it if need be. Because when you use a live filter, it makes its own layer. Now you can see me fiddling with the controls here, but it doesn't really seem to help very much. It, this is part of photo editing. There is a lot of trial and error when it comes to this stuff. You never know exactly how the photo is going to turn out until it's done. Just putting some finishing checks on it and we're done. You hit the file button and then export. And again, this is why I love using iPad because once the export menu pops up, there it is. You can just bring in your photos from the slide over again and drag the uh, box that says JPEG right into there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next one. Have a great day.